Welcome to the Infinity Complete Story. Now this story can get confusing, so we're going to be explaining a few key elements right off from the start. If you would like more in-depth overviews into these elements, just ask and we'll make a Know Your Universe about them. Now first off, Thanos. And if you want to learn his entire history in about 30 minutes, a good friend of ours has an explanation on him over on his channel. The annotation should be on the screen right about now, or it's in the description down below. But for the sake of this, you need to understand that Thanos is a character who is in love with death. And I don't mean the idea of it, I mean he's literally in love with Mistress Death, the physical embodiment of death. To win her affection, he tries multiple times to wipe out all life in the universe. But he also tries multiple times to wipe out all life on Earth as a gift to Mistress Death. Now in order to accomplish this mass death goal, he often tries to get as much power as he can, often going to the point of omnipotence multiple times thanks to the Infinity Gauntlet that he creates. So suffice to say, he's a very bad guy that the heroes of the Marvel Universe prefer not to mess with. Secondly, you need to know who the Builders are. They are one of the oldest races in the universe, or maybe even the multiverse. They go about building and creating worlds as they see fit, something the Celestials also do. But the Builders also created the Superflow, which creates white events, which are blinding flashes of light that changes everything. Sometimes it gives powers, sometimes it destroys things. I know it's very vague, but so are the Builders. What you need to know for this is that they create and destroy things. Third, you need to understand who the Inhumans are. The Inhumans are the result of a Kree experiment on early human life. They tried to produce a genetically advanced Inhuman race, but due to a prophecy of theirs, they abandoned the project early on. Eventually, the Inhumans discovered the Terrigen Mist and discovered that once exposed to this, it would give them extraordinary powers. But this would also lead to deformities and problems for them. So they chose to selectively breed amongst themselves to get rid of these problems, and hoard all of the Terrigen Mist at their floating city of Atelia, which is run by their king, Black Bolt. Now that you understand who the three main players that we've never gone over are, let's get this story going. Things begin with an Outrider arriving at Earth to look for our secrets. Now an Outrider is a genetically created assassin who is created to serve their master. And this Outrider is here to find something for his master Thanos. While he gets defeated by the Inhumans while looking around their city, he does escape with some rather interesting news that his master Thanos can actually use. The Avengers aren't on Earth right now. So where are the Avengers? Well, the Builders are currently going through worlds and destroying them, and the Avengers received footage of this and decide to go to the Galactic Council to come up with a plan to stop the Builders from destroying more worlds. The ultimate plan that they all come up with is to lure the Builders into a trap with the combined forces of the Galactic Council backing them. Everything seems to be working with the Builders trapped and vulnerable, but then the Builders decloak the rest of their fleet and they lay waste to the forces that the Galactic Council has there. Back on Earth, Thanos begins his invasion. With Earth's mightiest heroes preoccupied, this is his chance to get what he wants, a tribute of Inhuman children aged 16 to 22. But Black Bolt goes to the Inhuman's Codex to discover exactly what Thanos is after. It turns out, Thanos has a son, and he would like to find and kill this son of his. Long ago, there was a period in which an Inhuman woman had Thanos' child, and she fled to Earth. Black Bolt takes this information to the Illuminati which is a secret society of Iron Man, Black Panther, Namor, Reed Richards, Stephen Strange, and Beast. And they use this information to track down the son of Thanos before Thanos can find him, while Black Bolt goes to confront Thanos himself. Stephen Strange actually manages to track down the unchanged inhuman son of Thanos, but he was hiding another being that had possessed him inside of himself. A follower of Thanos, this being that was possessing Stephen Strange takes the information of the inhuman child of Thanos' whereabouts and leaves. And since he was possessing Stephen Strange this whole time, he leaves Strange not to remember finding Thanos' son before he returns to the Illuminati. Because the Illuminati has a new problem. A parallel world in the multiverse is beginning to invade right on top of Thanos invading the planet. Meanwhile, up in space, all of the alien races are there with their own plans to stop the Builders. But it's doing nothing but causing more destruction. Many of the Avengers in space get captured, including Hawkeye and Captain Marvel and a few others. Captain America, Thor, Hulk, Black Widow, Falcon, and the surviving Avengers all go into hiding amongst the remaining portions of the Galactic Council's fleet. Eventually, they come together with the remaining forces, and they launch a full-scale assault against the Builders by hijacking their own ships against them. Ultimately, Captain America succeeds in rescuing his team. But this isn't the end of the Builders. Back on Earth, Thanos goes to the floating city of Atelion and gives Black Bolt an option. Surrender the children to him, or he'll destroy everything. Black Bolt responds by talking. You see, Black Bolt normally has to whisper because his voice can destroy anything. Well, 
Black Bolt refuses Thanos by yelling, and he destroys the entire city of Atelian. The city falls down to New York beneath it, but that's not the worst part. It was housing the Terrigen Bomb. Once Black Bolt's voice sets off the bomb, the Terrigen Mists go over the entire world, and anybody who had potential to be an Inhuman is suddenly granted powers. Even this couldn't stop Thanos, though, as he begins to beat down Black Bolt, asking for the location of his son. Take your secrets to the grave, he shouts as he slams Black Bolt into the ground. What Thanos doesn't realize is no one, including Black Bolt, knows who Thanos' son really was. Well, Thane now has his powers awakened. Back up in space, Captain decides it's time to surrender. He sends in Thor, hammerless, to bow and surrender to the Builders. While the Builders think they have won, they don't realize that Thor can call back his hammer, and he calls it back, sending it right through the Builder's stomach, killing him. As he falls, he utters the words, You don't understand. This means we all die. Thor then takes control of the Builder's ship. The Avengers and the Allies begin to take everything back from the Builders. But the war is far from over, as the Builders refuse to fail, and they keep fighting back, stronger and harder than before. But the Avengers have a secret weapon. The essence of Captain Universe is currently inhabiting a comatose woman. And she's finally awoken because things have just gotten that bad. The Builders view Captain Universe as the goddess, and she arrives and destroys the command ship. The Avengers have won! Except for one more problem. Just before the last Builder dies, he turns all the robots into destroy everything mode. Back on Earth, with everyone reeling from the Terrigen Mist explosion, the Illuminati comes face to face with a soldier of the Builders from that other universe. He brings them to the Builder's ship from the other universe, and these Builders explain that their race uses the Superflow to travel between the multiverse worlds, and that Superflow has been destroyed. And the destruction of the Superflow is the harbinger for the end of everything, the end of existence itself, and the Builders have pledged to prevent this. He then tells them that the Builders of this world were just defeated by the Avengers in space. Go Cap! He also then explains that the Earth of every multiverse is the access point for the death of everything. The Builders need to destroy every Earth, and every multiverse, and destroy it from ever existing to save the rest of the universes. But these Builders can't cross into our world, and Cap defeated the Builders here. So these other Builders leave it to the Illuminati. They leave them with the simple phrase, Do you have what it takes to destroy your own world, and save the entire multiverse? Back up in space, the Avengers pushed onward and defeated all of the self-destructing robots and rescued all of the worlds. They dub every world that they save an Avengers world. They then decide to return to Earth, for there is one more world that needs saving. And nothing can stand in their way as they push their way through every blockade and force that is in their way. Damn you Avengers, you're just so damn effective. Back on Earth, we now go to Thane, the son of Thanos. He has been granted his powers finally by the exploding Terrigen Bomb. The being that was possessing Doctor Strange is also there, though. The Whisperer explains that Thanos seeked death, but he has spawned death. Thane is not a healer. He is a being of destruction. Meanwhile, Thanos takes Black Bolt and rigs him into an antimatter bomb over at Wakanda. Thanos will find his son, and just then he gets the information of where his son is from the Whisperer. Thanos arrives and confronts Thane. When asked why he's hunting his son trying to kill him, Thanos simply replies, that Thane's existence haunts him. While this is going on, the Illuminati manages to break through Wakanda and get to the room with the bombs, only to find Black Bolt being mind-controlled. After all of this, Doctor Strange is a little pissed. But they do manage to pull through and they stop the bombs from ever going off. Over at Thanos and Thane, Thanos is about to get away with his son when BOOM! The Hulk arrives! Guess who's home, folks? Thanos' bodyguards try to defeat the Hulk, but there's Cap, and there's Thor, and there's Captain Marvel! You can't stop the Avengers, Thanos! The fight continues as Thane sees the Avengers here to rescue him. One by one, the Avengers drop the minions at Thanos. But Thanos is really powerful, and he really doesn't need the minions to help him. But, is he too powerful for the God of Thunder? Thor sends everything he can at Thanos. But it's not enough, and Thor begins to lose. But Thane has finally had enough, and he steps in, and with a single motion, he encases Thanos into a limbo stasis form. It's over. The Builders are defeated, the antimatter bomb is defused, Thanos is trapped forever, and his force is defeated, and the Terrigen Mists are now revealing new Inhumans all over the world. Black Bolt vanishes, presumed killed by Thanos, though it is revealed that he intended to set the bomb off anyway. The world needs more Inhumans. 
Thane also vanishes to be trained by the Whisperer to turn into something far worse than Thanos could ever be, to be the evil that this dying universe needs. But what of the fact that the universe is dying? What of the multiverse? Well, we'll find out in later stories, because this is where this one ends. Now that was a complex story, and I hope you all understood it and enjoyed it. And if you did, I would really appreciate a like on this video, because this one was kind of complex for me to put together into a nice digestible bite like this. Thank you for joining me, and make sure you watch all the previous stories so you can get a grasp of what happened here. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below, please. And I'll see you guys next time here at Comic Comicstorian.